and, and last but not the least, uh, we <laughs> also have our executive vice president, provost uh, Larry Pitts, who's representing. <laughs> Pradeep, I want to, on, on behalf of our faculty, staff, and students, as well as the San Diego community at large, I really want to extend a warm welcome to you personally. We wish your wife and kids could have been here too, but we hope we'll see them sometime soon. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this transition in ca campus leadership comes at a pivotal time for us. Just a couple of years ago, we celebrated our 50th anniversary. And I think the road ahead promises to be exciting. We can't promise that there won't be any challenges, but we do believe that we're uniquely poised with respect to catapulting ourselves uh, into our continuing trajectory in excellence. And we look forward to working with you under your able leadership. And this is actually reflected in, in a variety of metrics. I'm not going to belabor you on all of those, but our recent admission numbers uh, talking about the students and their interest to come to UCSD has been phenomenal. And indeed, there's a continuing excitement from students within the state of California as well as the rest of the US and indeed across the world. So we are very pleased to have outstanding students here who are uh, allowing us to accomplish our academic mission. Of course, we also have our outstanding faculty uh, who are continuing to excel on all fronts. And even as we speak, they are developing exciting new research, education, and service uh, profiles ready to, uh, to present to you when you arrive in August or perhaps even before then. And uh, we look forward to that. And everything that we do really is aimed at societal impact. So we hope that the community also appreciates this is on behalf of the university. And, um, but most importantly, it is the staff and, and the people who make this university run that uh, are terribly important. And I see at least one person clapping. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I do want to thank uh, the staff for everything that they do, but uh, I also extend this welcome on their behalf. Uh, our university has soared to exceptional new heights under our current chancellor, Chancellor Fox, under her visionary leadership. And we wish to thank her for that. But as we look forward with great enthusiasm to, to your vision and, and your leadership, uh, we hope that we can partner with you in going into the uh, new generation of excellence in discovery, uh, innovation, and scholarship. And to get you started, we have a welcome package here for you to be sure that in your new position, you're well prepared for this. And so we've created what we call a chancellor survival kit. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you've already received a couple of items from the UC San Diego uh, Staff Association, a ball cap to protect you from the sun. And, and you're, oh, I hear that your uh, uh, chancellor's uh, uh, staff have prevent, uh, presented you with a bunch of energy bars to keep you going. <laughs> from, from everything that I hear, you don't need it, but uh, it, it will keep, perhaps when we visit you, you can uh, pass those on to us. And let me... <laughs> And, and, and let me begin the proceedings by uh, passing on to you something that was given to me personally by a very dear friend at a retirement party a year ago. Uh, this was given to me by Imo Scheffler, one of my biology colleagues. And uh, I think you deserve this better. It's this pair of rose-tint glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I'd like to do is to invite first uh, our Chancellor Marianne Fox to come and say a few words and present you with her uh, uh, first item from the Chancellor's Survival Kit. <laughs> Well, thank you, Suresh. I know all of you know that there is no one happier in this room. <laughs> and I didn't even have the rose-colored glasses. I want to tell you how wonderful it is to have uh, Pradeep Kozla as our new leader. Do you know that he's been only named since yesterday afternoon and already? Suresh has received a major award from the University of California, the, the Chen Award, which indicates strong academic contributions. So this is going to be quite a, 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 a two, duo. Congratulations. <laughs> to 
Chancellor Kosla. Boy, does that sound good. <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome you to the University of California, San Diego, and I congratulate you on your appointment as the campus's eighth chancellor. You are an accomplished executive and a visionary who exceeds all expectations. Your ability to think creatively, to set a strategic direction, to inspire those around you is unsurpassed. You set big goals and then you far surpass them. You've demonstrated this time and time again through successful fundraising initiatives, diversity efforts, academic programs, and your own achievements in research, education, and business. You have a natural tendency to bring out the best in people. You promote collaboration, innovation, and multidisciplinary work and study which are the building blocks that have established UC San Diego's tradition of excellence and its reputation. Our founder, Roger Revelle, said from the beginning that what he wanted to do was to create a distinctive university. That's what we've become, and you are a distinctive leader. I'm confident that we will continue to be able to build on the momentum of UC San Diego and the five years, the five, five decades of success and chart the course for the next 50 years and belong and beyond. You have the skill that this campus needs. You're resourceful, open-minded, collaborative, and above all, an advocate for students, faculty, and staff. You will be able to navigate the campus through a minefield of challenges, including one of our biggest challenges in the recent years, the severe reduction in state funding of higher education. And however strongly is our opposition to this reduction in higher education, we know that with your keen business sense, you'll be able to identify opportunities and partnerships that will benefit the campus and community and take UC San Diego to the next level and the next level and the next level. You are a go-getter, and I've heard more than one person uh, describe you as a live wire. <laughs> as an electrochemist, I know what that means. <laughs> Your energy and enthusiasm will serve you well and us, especially since the Chancellor is also, also, always on the go. It's a 24-7 job, as all of you know. So I'd like to present you with the next item in your cancer... <laughs> your Chancellor survival kit. You can see what we've been doing all morning. I think. <laughs> it's something you're going to need on this campus, a UC San Diego parking pass. <laughs> is worth its weight in gold. <laughs> and I congratulate you on your appointment. UC San Diego is in good hands. Thank Thanks for everyone. For coming. Well, thank you, Marianne. I'd, I'd like to next invite uh, our past president from uh, Associated Students, Alyssa Wing to come and present to Pradeep the biggest item in our Chancellor's Survival Kit. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you for that welcome, Suresh. I'm actually the outgoing AS president, so I'm really honored to be here today to speak to you all. Um, as a student and member of the Chancellor's Search Committee, I am honored and excited to welcome you to our campus. I had the opportunity to get to know you during the selection process, and it gives me the great pleasure to see you here on this campus today as our Chancellor designate. It became apparent that during the interviews, you would be the leader that this campus needs. You have the experience and skills to lead this diverse campus with nearly 30,000 students. You are open, welcoming, and approachable. And you truly care about the students, our experience, and our success. I know you will make strong connections with our students and alumni, with myself being one of them in a few weeks. And you will strengthen UC San Diego's world-class reputation, help us further our local, national, and global impact and as well as our rankings. Although there are two rankings where we can't go any higher, 
UC San Diego is ranked the number one university in the nation in two different categories. The first being Washington Monthly. Uh, they say that we're the number one school for our commitment to service, and our students have played a big role in that through their community service. And our second number one ranking, UC San Diego is also ranked the number one surf school in the nation. <laughs> and so that leads me to your next item in your Chancellor's Survival Kit, because... <laughs> Chancellor Kosla, this surfboard with the UC San Diego logo was made just for you, and I'm sure our surf team is willing to give you some pointers. <laughs> On behalf of the students, we welcome you to our campus, because here at UC San Diego, we work hard and we also play hard, so I hope you enjoy that surfboard. We also hope to see you out catching some waves and hopefully making big waves for our university in the coming years. We look forward to seeing you around the campus and welcome to your new home. Pretty good luck getting that on the plane. <laughs> and you know, also, yeah, you, you, you told your wife and kids that you were going on a day of very hard work. I'd like to see you come back with a surfboard. By the way, the shorts are in the mail to you. So I, I now have the distinct pleasure uh, on behalf of the University of California as well as the Regents to invite uh, our Executive Vice President and Provost uh, Larry Pitts. He's here representing Mark Udoff, who unfortunately could not be here because of a family uh, emergency. But uh, Larry would officially introduce Pradeep Posla as our next chancellor. Larry. Thank you, Suresh. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of President Udoff to introduce uh, UC San Diego's eighth chancellor. When Mary Ann Fox stepped down last summer, or announced last summer she was stepping down uh, this summer, uh, we launched an international search to find her replacement. As you can imagine, it's not easy to find one person who can be a CEO, uh, the mayor of a diverse municipality, an academic and thought leader, and a successful fundraiser. That's quite a package. Those are key ingredients for a successful chancellor, as Mary Ann has been and her predecessors. We did find those characteristics in Pradeep Khosla. Uh, he emerged as a top candidate because of his accomplishments as a leader, an educator, and a researcher. For the past eight years, he's been dean of the College of Engineering at the prestigious Carnegie Mellon Institute, or university, where he set the strategic direction for undergraduate and graduate education and research. He's initiated undergraduate curriculum reforms, successful diversity efforts, multiple, multidisciplinary research programs and graduate offerings, and international programs. He says he has several outreach universities that are doing very well. He may want to talk about those at some point with you. Several strategic initiatives also launched uh, resulted in doubling of the college's budget and also near doubling of the PhD students during his tenure. He was also the founding director of Carnegie Mellon's SciLab, a multidisciplinary initiative involving faculty, students, and staff that focuses on cybersecurity, a hot topic these days, as you well know. He helped make the SciLab a successful global enterprise. He's also a leader who is devoted and dedicated to improving the quality of life for students, faculty, and staff. He's an entrepreneurial leader with a strategic vision. He recognizes the importance of having a diverse campus community and how it can enhance the social and academic experience for all campus members. Under his leadership, the College of Engineering significantly increased the number of women and uh, students of color in its graduate programs. He has, also, uh, has already expressed his commitment 
to ensuring an opening uh, and welcome uh, campus climate for everyone at San Diego. He believes in shared governance and community engagement. He's been an active member of the Pittsburgh community, and I'm certain he will strengthen his ties uh, between the campus and the San Diego community. He's the type of person who tackles challenges, finds opportunities, thinks outside the box, and creates positive change. That's why he's been extremely successful as an administrator and in his field of engineering. Among his achievements, he's been elected to the National Academy of Engineering, the India Academy of Engineering, and the American Association of Artificial Intelligence. He's received numerous awards, including the Computers and Engineering Lifetime Achievement Award of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. And he was elected university professor at Carnegie Mellon, the highest academic distinction university members uh, can achieve. His experience and accomplishments as an educator, as an entrepreneur, and an executive make him an ideal fit as UC San Diego's eighth chancellor. Uh, he will inaugurate your, the second 50 years of your first century. Uh, it's a, a, UC San Diego has had just a meteoric rise among American universities over its 50 years so far. It's, just, it's an extraordinary institution. It's a very complex institution, including the health sciences, engineering, the social sciences, the full works with a bunch of research institutes attached. So it's, it's, it's a superb place. He is up to the complexity and, and uh, success of UC San Diego, and I think will continue on its uh, current track. I look forward to coming back in a year uh, and seeing Pradeep on his surfboard with his rose-colored glasses. <laughs> uh, you know, somebody's going to have to teach him a few things about surfing, I would anticipate, but I'm sure he's up to that challenge as well. Thank you. Pradeep, I'd like to come forward and say a few words. Thank you, Provost Pitts. Uh, thank you, Marianne Fox, Chancellor Fox. Thank you. Should I say Provost Subramanian? No, Not sorry, quite. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I really appreciate all the kind words uh, that you have said, even though they might be a little bit exaggerated than they need to be. Uh, but that's okay. I can take a compliment. Uh, if you wonder why I'm so nervous, I think you will understand my difficulty really well when you realize that I'm following the footsteps of seven great chancellors, not one, not two, but seven great chancellors that have led this place for 50 years. I'm taking over the helm of a university that is younger than I am and has accomplished a lot more than I ever will, <laughs> right? And this is all thanks to the great leadership that we've had and thanks to the high quality of faculty, students, staff, and now alumni who every day work very hard to contribute to this place. So I apologize for being a bit nervous today and going forward into the future, but I hope uh, you'll help me get over that. Uh, thank you also for the generosity and this uh, witty gifts, but I do have to say, these rose-colored uh, rose glasses if I was on Saturday Night Live, I'd be like <laughs> throwing them. Uh, not because I don't like them, but because I think at this university, I don't need them. Everything is rose-colored. I don't need. <laughs> right? So, with that said, I think I'm going to hand this over to Suresh so he can... <laughs> so he can correct his own vision of what this university is all about. Okay. About that parking pass, I think I'm going to need that. Uh, yeah, I got that. I'm going to need that. Uh, the surfboard, actually, I wasn't sure what the goal out here was. Uh, in case you don't know, I'm actually afraid of water. <laughs> but having said that, if I do ever have to swim with the sharks, I might be better off on the surfboat. So I think it might be a metaphor for dealing with what? <laughs> okay, whatever. I don't know. So we'll leave that question open. Uh, as I stand here today, I'm actually uh, very well aware of the significant challenges that face this university. Uh, it's not just this university that face higher education in this whole country. Uh, but 
in that context, this state and this university is really significant because this, I believe, is the premier example of the best public system ever created. And as we face these challenges, uh, there is a small possibility, probability, that this great public system could be dismantled. And I think we as a community have to make sure that this does not happen. Not only it does not happen for the good of this community, but for the good of this state, but for the good of this country. This country needs us as much as, much as this community needs us. So in the, doing that, I'll be looking forward uh, to your ideas, your energy, your thoughts, and trying to find a way as to how it can all be integrated so that we can be the exemplar of an institution within the UC system and also for this country. So I'm hoping that we'll all be able to work together in achieving those goals. Uh, so there are also a lot of uh, positive and dynamic developments uh, that this place has uh, been an exemplar for. I have never seen a university that in 50 years uh, has accomplished so much and may I say with so little. Uh, going forward, I think we'll have a choice of waiting for the good old days to come back or trying to define our good old days going forward. And I hope that we don't wait for the good old days to come back because I don't think they ever might. But on the other hand, we will have the passport, the license, the energy to define what the good old days of the future are going to look like. And I hope I'll be able to count on all of you, faculty, students, and staff, in working towards creating a vision in that area. Let me take a moment to thank Mary Ann Fox. So when I got the call, when I got this call from the, I was going to call him a headhunter, but that's kind of an <laughs> executive recruiter. Uh, uh, and I never imagined two things. I never imagined I'd ever leave Carnegie Mellon and I never imagined I'd ever go to a private, uh, public university. Uh, but having said that, one does say never say never, and in the context of thinking about this, I said, you know, there might be one or two public universities I might consider, and UC San Diego was number one on the list for many, many reasons, partly your culture, partly your history, but really for the legacy of Chancellor Fox. I have now watched her from far over the last eight years, and it has been amazing what this university has accomplished. So with that said, please join me. This is my thank you, because without Mary Ann's leadership, without the hard work that she has made you all do, without doing it herself, <laughs> this university would not be very attractive to me. So if I'm here today, I think I owe a little bit or a lot of thanks to Mary Ann Fox. Thank you. So I'm just hoping, and this is me setting expectations, that if I can accomplish 10% of what she did, you will declare me successful. <laughs> okay, so that's a deal, that's a pact we make today. Thank you very much for your support. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, you know, coming from Carnegie Mellon, I've had uh, really the good fortune of working with some of the top-notch people, and I'm talking faculty, students, and staff, and I can tell you that as I look at this place, uh, it is amazing to me that there are at least as many and most likely a lot more top-notch people to work for, or work for and work with out here. Uh, this is a place that is different from Carnegie Mellon, uh, not just public, private, but in areas of strength. And this is a place that I believe is going to define the future. So as we look at the world in the future, there are several challenges that face us. Challenges in water, energy, environment, food, security, health care, education. And I cannot imagine a place better than this that has strength in all of these areas in the fine arts, in the humanities, social sciences, sciences, engineering, technology, uh, environment. And I think our goal would be to define a future for this place where we all work together as one single logical university, even though it has three distinct components, being scripts, being healthcare, and being campus out here. 
but to somebody from the outside, we should look at one logical place where everything can be done, will be done, that needs to be done. So I'm hoping I can count on you for accomplishing some of that also. Uh, last but not the least, uh, let me say something about shared governance. There are multiple ways to look at it. Uh, there's a way to look at it which says, it's a bureaucratic process, I'll deal with it. But I have a different view. The way I look at it is, it is an asset base we have, this place has, with faculty members, staff and students who have all made a significant commitment of their time to make this a better place. And if I believe in all of you, I would be stupid, if not dumb, or maybe both, to not exploit that asset. So I really look forward to working in the context of shared governance, but not just with the faculty senate, with the staff, with the students, and with the broader community outside San Diego, or with the broader San Diego community. I think this community has put its faith in this university for the last, last 50 years. I think this community will continue to put its faith. This university, this campus, has given a lot back to this community. We will continue to do so, and I think we need to bolster that relationship uh, really create a stronger relationship, stronger than we have right now, and it'll be good for all of us. With that said, I think I can go on talking for a long time, um, but let me just bring to a close as to uh, the quality of the warm welcome that I received. So this announcement was made on May 3rd at 12 noon. The president's office really wanted to control every little detail. I wonder why. Usually they're not the controlling type. <laughs> Did I get that? <laughs> That's what I was told. <laughs> so between 3 p.m. Pittsburgh time to probably about midnight, I must have gotten more than 200 email messages. And I only had like five people that I know in this campus. Uh, one of them is Bob Sullivan, the other is Mohan, Tony, you know, just I can count like maybe 10. But I get 200 messages from people I don't know. And these were all extremely warm messages welcoming me to this place. So that made me feel really good. More important was the fact that there was a message from a graduate student, uh, actually several graduate students, but one in particular. And in his message, he represented the Graduate Student Assembly, I think, that, or the association, what's it called? The association. And it was probably the most well thought out letter I've ever seen. It was amazing that the GSA would write a letter that was so well thought out. Then there was a message from an undergrad who just sent me a message out of the blue saying, hey, Chancellor Kosla, how do you dig? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> I don't know what how do you dig means. So, so I call up my son. And he says, oh, Dad, that's California speak. In Pittsburgh, we don't talk like that. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I go on the web and I say, I figure it out. I said, okay, this is good. So I sent a nice note back to this young man. I said, thank you very much for your kind wishes. Uh, and I re really appreciate uh, you welcoming me, uh, but feel free to stop by and see me when I'm on campus. So then he sends a note back saying, you know, I always wondered what a chancellor did. So maybe I'll stop by. <laughs> And then he goes on to say that at what point did you decide that being chancellor was going to be your career? <laughs> so now if you're a faculty member, you know, calling somebody a chancellor and their career as being a chancellor is not quite flattering. But anyway, <laughs> but, but it was really touching to me that, or touching for, uh, to me that an undergrad would take uh, the time and effort and make the time and effort. Then there was this message from a staff member who offered to uh, tell me a lot more about the campus and the issues. No, seriously, it was a very well thought out message and I read that too. So the point I'm trying to make is uh, I never quite imagined a welcome this warm long before the regents had uh, given their approval. And today when I walked here, I didn't imagine a welcome this warm. So thank you very much. I'm just looking forward for this to be August 1. I wish it could be tomorrow and to being here, working with you all. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Pradeep. And I, I really want to thank you, particularly for the sentiments you expressed that uh, despite difficult financial times, uh, we, we face some interesting challenges and it's a wonderful path ahead. And I want to re relate to you as, you were, as I was sitting there listening to you, a uh, true but humbling anecdote that happened to me personally. I was in Washington, D.C. trying to get to the airport and an Ethiopian cab driver picked me up and we were going to the airport. We had this wonderful conversation about our lives and families and so on. When we got to the airport, I opened my wallet and I had $5. The fare was 50, $58. And I told him, would you take me in a, to an ATM to uh, get some money? He said, my friend, where we come from, it's not all about money. So it's the same uh, spirit, I think, that you, you've embraced. And I, I'm really delighted to hear the stories about what our faculty, staff, and students have uh, done in welcoming you. For us, it, is, it goes beyond resources, so I want to welcome you again. So let me just finish by uh, just saying that I have one last item uh, in our Chancellor Survival Kit, and this comes from the staff that you'll inherit, and it's actually a, a, a day calendar, and we hear that you're prone to filling in your own calendar, so this has been filled for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's uh, about time to wrap up. I want to thank all of you for attending. Uh, uh, and I also know that uh, all of these things are being taped. So even as we speak, students are sitting in classrooms, hopefully studying, but perhaps watching what's happening here, as well as the dorms and dining rooms and so on. It's also being broadcast simultaneously to the entire UC San Diego community. Uh, so on behalf of all of these people, I'd like to say thank you for attending and we look forward to a very exciting time. I hope the rest of the day here for you is exciting, but uh, even more so when you arrive on campus, we look forward to working with you closely. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you.